It's cold outside, which means it's time for another soup recipe. We're making ham and potato corn chowder. This soup is loaded with all things delicious. A list of ingredients and detailed directions are posted down in the video's description box for your convenience. Grab your favorite soup pot, let's get started. To a big pot on the stove, or in my case, I'm using my Dutch oven. We're gonna start by cooking up some bacon. This, of course, is optional. The bacon is not an ingredient in the soup, more like just an added topping to the final product. If you're not planning to cook up any bacon, you're gonna wanna toss in and and melt three tablespoons of salted butter. If you are planning on cooking up some bacon, leave the bacon grease behind. We're gonna use that to cook our veggies in. Speaking of vegetables, we need four carrots diced into small cubes. Simply cut your carrots lengthwise and then into small bite-sized pieces. We're gonna do the same thing with four sticks of celery. Since there's so many items in this soup, everything wants to be small and bite-sized. So a little bit of everything fits on the spoon when we're ready to dig in. This isn't like a classic hearty stew where big chunks of beef or potatoes make up the bulk of each bite. We want a little bit of everything to fit on our spoon. We're also going to dice up one white onion. Keep in mind all of our veggies are going to shrink just a little bit during the cooking process, so don't make them too tiny. Once you have all of your vegetables diced, carefully toss them into your pot on the stove over medium-high heat, which should still have that leftover bacon grease in it or three tablespoons of melted salted butter from earlier. As a side note, I'm using a seven-quart cast iron Dutch oven. If by some chance you think you don't have nearly enough bacon grease in your pot, you can of course add Add in more salted butter. You're definitely not going to hurt anything by adding in more butter. Give that a quick stir. We're going to let the veggies cook until they're tender, about 8 to 10 minutes depending on the size of the vegetables. While that's cooking, we need 2 to 4 garlic cloves chopped. Check in on your vegetables before adding in your garlic to the pot, as garlic doesn't take nearly as long to cook once added in. Once everything looks tender, we're going to add in our garlic followed by our seasonings. We need 2 teaspoons of thyme, one teaspoon of black pepper, and start with one teaspoon of salt. I would highly suggest adjusting the amount of seasonings according to your tastes. Some people like a lot of seasonings, others maybe not so much. I would suggest starting out with these measurements, and if you think you need more of anything, just add a little bit more. Next, we need half a cup of all-purpose flour. We're going to mix this in completely, and before we add in our liquids, we're going to cook out the raw flour taste, and that should only take about two to three minutes. Next goes in all of our liquids. We need four cups of chicken broth, two cups of heavy cream, and two cups of milk. I'm using 2% because that's what's in my fridge, but whole milk is perfectly fine. Mix all that in real quick. For our potatoes, we need three pounds of rusted potatoes, diced. I've pre-diced my potatoes, so y'all don't have to watch my sketchy knife skills or lack thereof. Into the pot they go. We're gonna bring this up to a boil, then reduce the heat and let everything simmer until the potatoes are tender. This might take anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. While that's cooking, let's move on to the ham. I picked this up from Walmart. They call it a boneless ham steak. We need roughly 16 ounces of cubed ham. Two packages should be more than enough. We're going to take our ham and slice it up into bite-sized pieces just like everything else. We of course want it to fit nicely on our spoon without hogging all the real estate. Once our soup has started to boil, we're going to add in our last few remaining ingredients. Dump in one full can of yellow corn, liquids included, and add in all of that delicious ham we just diced up. At this point, we can turn down the heat and let this cook until the ham and corn are heated through. This next step, like the bacon, is also optional, but I like to add in a cup or two of shredded cheddar cheese. Now would be the perfect time to taste test your soup. Add in any additional seasonings like salt and pepper, maybe even a little bit more thyme. Whatever you think, it might need a little extra of, if any. At all. If you cooked up some bacon earlier on, add it to your individual bowls of soup with a sprinkling of cheddar cheese. Here's that ingredients list. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out, and I'll see you all in the next video.